find a power series representation. for the function 1 over x plus 2. This is kind of similar to the last example. We had 1 over 1 plus x squared. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to compute this the same way. So in, in the back of my head, I'm thinking about my formula for a geometric sum, which maybe I'll write down so we have it A over 1 minus R. So in the front, I need to have the number in the denominator. In the front, I need to have the number 1. Right now it's X. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to interchange the X and the 2, which I can do because addition is commutative. I can, X plus 2 is the same thing as 2 plus X. So I'm going to switch it around and write it as 2 plus x. I would like for that number in front, 2, to become a 1. How can I turn that into a 1? Factor out a 2. Great. Let's factor out a 2. When you factor out the 2, it's going to factor out of both terms. So 1 plus x over 2. And I'm going to split this up now as the first part is 1 half times 1 over 1 plus x over 2. Okay, so we got this extra 1 half out in front. That's okay. Again, think about our formula. I now have a 1, but I need to have a minus. Have a plus. Didn't we have that problem on the last one? How do we fix it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Change it into a minus and insert in a negative. So this is one half, one over one minus negative x over two. And now we can use our formula here for this part on the left. Write down the power series for that. So I have one half and then you're going to replace an x to the n. I'm going to replace it with negative x over 2 to the n. Usually for power series, we want to have the power series representations. I would like for everything to be on the inside of the sum. So I'm going to simplify what's inside of the sum. I'm going to use my rules for exponents and write this as negative x to the n over 2 to the n. And then I can combine. Once I pull that, once I pull the one half, this is just a constant, so I can pull it inside, and I can combine these two together. I have the same base. Anytime you have the same base, you can combine. So when I combine them, I'm going to get negative x to the n over 2 to the n plus 1. And this is your power series representation for your function. Okay. Now I know this problem didn't ask you for interval convergence, but what if it did? So you can write out some of the terms if you need to do that. That might help. So it'll be 1 over 2 and negative x over 2 squared 
plus a positive x squared over 2 cubed, and so forth. Remember, this is all based off of a geometric series. And what's your r going to be? Well, the signs are changing, so it's alternating. So it should have a minus here, minus x over 2, which is exactly what you had in that when you simplified it down, you had 1 minus negative x over 2. That's your r right there, 1 minus r. Geometric series converges when the absolute value of r is less than 1 or the absolute value of negative x over 2 is less than 1, which I can simplify as the absolute value of x all over 2 is less than 1. And the absolute value of x is less than 2. So I now know what my interval of convergence is. It's negative 2 to 2. Is it always going to be what's in the parentheses when it's equal to r? When you have x just by itself. But if this was like x, if it was like x minus 2 is less than 4. That would be a little bit different. Yeah. So it matters what your power series is centered at. Yeah.